officially recording the meeting. So I think um, word to Kimo. All right, I'll take over from here. Thank you, um, the technical crew, for uh, bringing this together. Hi, everyone. Um, right now, I'm just looking at the number. We got all to 40 attending participants. That's great. I'm sure more people are going to be joining. Thank you so very much for uh, being here today. My name is uh, Kimo Kamara. I'm the founder of uh, OMEC and uh, your host and moderator for this uh, amazing milestone fantastic event today. So I'm really, really excited. This is my second time being for iDiaspora and I'm sure it's not the last time. I'll do my best um, to make sure that they don't kick me out. I love being here and this is a community, it's a global community and uh, yeah, they will have to drag me to, to be outside this community. Um, it's not about me, I'm excited to be here and mm -hmm. like you can see, so we have a, a really um, simple program today but um really insightful and then really excited to be here and then you will see what um our panelists and then moderate um guests start talking about what is what what everybody's here today so before we do that we actually gonna um go and then give the opportunity to um you know miss lara thompson who's actually the deputy director to give us a, a welcome session and then after that then we can kick start so, um, yeah, Ms. Laura, if you want to go ahead and then take away from here. Thank you, Kimo, and uh, hello, everybody. Uh, uh, it is a pleasure uh, for me to welcome you to this event, iDiaspora, two years after accelerating diaspora's global engagement in the post-pandemic era. Two years ago, uh, during the International Dialogue on Migration, we launched the iDiaspora platform. Today, we want to jointly look at the progress of the platform and to how it has contributed to the empowerment and collaboration among global diasporas, and to present to you the new version of the platform and the functionalities. iDiaspora was born in 2017 from the need to provide platform, a digital venue driven by communities themselves, connect, contribute, and learn. To connect to each other and reach out to as many voices as possible. To contribute to important international fora, in particular to the deliberations in the context of the negotiations of the Global Compact on SAFE orderly and regular migration, and to learn from each other and from those who look at engaging with diaspora as well as from global expertise and initiatives. The platform now counts 510 members in 109 countries across continents. This is, I think, a very important achievement. IOM is very proud to have been able to facilitate the platform, as migrant communities and diasporas specifically have been IOM partners in addressing migration governance in different parts of the world. In addition, diasporas have been our partners in a number of initiatives, such as the so-called 3E strategy, engage, empower, and enable, thanks to which IOM has engaged with both transnational communities directly and supported governments and other partners to understand the relevance of diaspora engagement and to partner up with them. During these two years, diasporas have shown to be actors who engage in transnational initiatives to alleviate international crises and support their communities worldwide. They have proven to be the link that makes the difference between desperation and hope, reaching out to their communities and not letting vulnerable migrants in isolation. This has been particularly evident during the COVID-19 pandemic. Who better than our own communities can, in difficult times, reach out 
to offer help, build trust, and restore hope. And what an opportunity to make use of the technological tools that have helped us to continue communicating despite the lack of physical contact and presence. Together, we have organized three global diaspora virtual exchanges on COVID-19 response in English, French, and Spanish, allowing migrant communities from different regions to participate. These exchanges have offered a space of collaboration where diaspora groups are from around the world have shared their practices, initiatives, and innovations responding to the pandemic. Nearly 300 stakeholders have joined the discussion, including policymakers, researchers, members of the global civil society, and diaspora leaders. The common aim was to maximize the potential of migrant communities facing the pandemic worldwide and to show and to show them they are not alone and they have really a network to count on. During these global exchanges, we have identified some 50 examples on how diasporas have developed philanthropic, humanitarian, health and social transnational actions to support their communities, both in their host and home countries, including initiatives to inform the most vulnerable migrant populations about the risks of the COVID-19 disease and how to prevent the spread of the disease, initiatives that address the shortages of personal protective equipment, sanitation supplies and food, initiatives also that led to employment within their communities, and finally, initiatives to combat and denounce xenophobia. In sum, diasporas have shown to have the, so the social capital, the resources, and the capacities to design short-term initiatives to respond to global emergencies. Further, their knowledge and their ability to navigate different contexts have highlighted their ability to foster initiatives that mainstream development at the global, regional, national, and local levels. As all technological tools, our platform has quickly become outdated. As a result, we have reached out to all of you to improve the tool, address its shortcomings, and enhance its capacity to continue reaching out, innovating, and building trust. I want to acknowledge and thank all of those users who have contributed to this revamped version with their comments and suggestions. This version is indeed the result of a collective effort, and we hope that it better addresses the needs and expectations. Before passing the floor to my colleagues to present to you the new features of the platform, let me once again express my gratitude for your engagement in this initiative and for your collaboration. You are really an essential partner for IOM. I wish you, I wish you a fruitful and interesting discussion today. Thank you very much and uh, uh, good luck in the discussion. Thank you so much to the Deputy Director General for blessing us with this uh, kind word and then the update of like what the uh, um, iDiaspora program is about and what's been done so far. Thank you so much for being here and thank you for uh, um, for opening this session. And uh, now I'm looking really forward to um, to the next two people that's coming um, to actually take us a little bit through um, through this, the program and then also the progress that's been happening with iDiaspora since the, the, the last two years. But in addition to that, we're also going to see and then, you know, like just go through the 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 um, the, the platform itself, the changes that's happened, and then where the platform is being. Um, that will be the first, the second session that's happening. And after that session, then we'll bring some members of the diaspora, uh, leader of the diaspora. That's like a really been um, with I diaspora itself, like been doing really changes with the community 
within their respective community in the diaspora to like just give us share their perspective. So we'll start with the second session. What I'll do, I'll start actually with uh, um, Dr. Larissa to just give us, uh, take us through the progress of like what I diaspora has been doing so far the past two years. Thank you so much, Kimo. I try. I would like to share my screen, but I think the option is not uh, available. But it doesn't matter. I think the most important thing now is I really want to thank everyone involved in this project. I really see the evolution and the future very bright, and I'm really thankful for being sharing this floor with um, with different members of of diasporas. And I I am really grateful that not only we have um, African, but also uh, Latin American representation and also European representation and Asian representation. So I think this is a moment to just uh, think about that because I've been studying diasporas for quite a long time and it's my pleasure to see that these synergies are being created at a global level. So uh, I wanted to thank everyone involved in the project. So without any further ado, I will start my presentation. Hopefully um, I can share it. Just give me one second. Um, perfect. Uh, is it, can you see it? Yeah. Yes, oh, we can okay. see it, good. Thank you, perfect. So very briefly, I would like to comment on four points. Kim already addressed it. So I'm going to basically comment on the evolution of the, of the platform. And I will also present some data on the users, since you will see it's a very interesting community, um, not only internationally, but also we have achieved a gender balanced community. So I, I think that's actually also a very important point to mention. Um, then I will proceed to talk very briefly about the global diaspora virtual exchanges on COVID, which were um, very, very good to provide data and to really see how diasporas are contributing to, um, to development in the world. Finally, I will briefly present how diaspora engagement and the digitalization are very important key for the progress of the diaspora and also thinking about what we're living today. So the digital world has become very important and I think it will still be. So I will just make some points on that. So the community, the Idiaspora community is a platform um, to empower diaspora engagement. And it's a digital space that provides diaspora members in the world to connect, to share knowledge, to share their experiences and to share their best practices. They can share videos, pictures, everything. And I think, again, this is a very creative space. And most of all, it, it enables diaspora members to engage uh, in bottom up with a bottom up approach in the initiatives that they want to, to share with the others. So as um, we have been mentioning, there are different stakeholders involved in this pro in this process. So it's not only that we want um, uh, it's not only a, a space for migrants to create their initiatives, but also to tap on other resources and other expertise. So we also have members from businesses, from governments, from international international community in general and, glo and the global society. Um, and this is very important again, because it's a space that really wants to integrate different actors to provide important and smart solutions. We all as different actors have different knowledge and this is the place where we really want to share this. So um, we have people from different areas of expertise and different interests and they have been collaborating. And I will present a very specific key example, which are the, the global exchanges. Uh, as of today, we have 530 uh, members from 109 countries, and I'm sure that it will grow because everyone is being very active and I'm really grateful that everyone is responding to, 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 the, to the platform positively. Um, most of the users are young. Again, this is a very important um, statement because uh, as you know, the youth uh, and as the UN, we really focus on this, on this um, community. So we're trying to enhance also the, um, the initiatives done by, by, young by the young people. And as I told you before, in terms of gender, we're fairly balanced, which is again, a great progress. 
uh, from uh, the latest uh, numbers that we have is that um, almost 223,000 um, users, uh, sorry, uh, times it, uh, it has, the platform has been accessed. And in terms of the countries, that 32% uh, of our registered users are from India, 16% uh, from the US, and 6% from the UK. Again, it's, I think this will, it, it might vary across time, and I'm really curious to see how it evolves, because um, we are integrating members uh, for, from different diasporas, and, um, and again, I think it's a very, it, it's a very positive note. In terms of interest, we have different interests of the diasporas that have been involved. So it ranges from health to social interests to more economic, economic development, humanitarian support. So this is relevant to discuss and to think about because, um, as I told you before, it, it doesn't matter your area of expertise of interest, you will find an option to collaborate and to actually integrate um, interesting discussions with special specialists and experts and it's a, a hub of information that hopefully you will be able to access and to explore more. Finally, just very briefly, I would like to talk about the global diaspora uh, virtual exchanges on COVID. So we had three, one in English, one in French and one in Spanish and it was, it was uh, an important event because it actually brought together diaspora members from all over the world that could share their best practices and strategies to engage transnationally. Once again, I think this is one of the very few events that managed to attract so many people from so many different regions, and I think we have to acknowledge that. And hopefully we will very shortly present you a report that we have been working on to really, after analyzing all the different practices that um, diaspora members have have uh, done in the have shown in this in these events, we came up with um, the analysis and yep, and then um, three main sets of good practices. So after analyzing all all the exchanges, we realized that diasporas are really interested in enhancing connection, partnership, and self empowerment. In terms of connection, they really want to ensure to create long-term uh, sustainable networks that privilege bottom-up solutions. And they are actually pointing out that technology is a great tool to do that. In terms of partnership, diasporas uh, really emphasize the fact that communities need more trust and transparency. And once again, technology has been a key tool to do that. We, in the report, we will um, once we publish it, you will see that um, technology and smartphones has, have been very important in terms of ensuring transparency, trust uh, among the communities worldwide. And finally, in terms of self-empowerment, migrants have really um, showed that they can contribute with their know-how and their, their knowledge to development. So they, they really want to, to keep um, providing those resources and those um, tools that recognize their voice and capacities to fight for, for their own rights and to keep creating important co-development programs. So just a few notes before um, giving the floor to my colleague Roberto on, on diaspora engagement and digitalization. As we have seen, diasporas actually acknowledge the, the power of, of technology. And I think today it's even more relevant now what we are facing as an international community. So in terms of how can technology and diasporas are at linked is, um, and especially in the COVID times, diasporas have been able to create informative campaigns. They use technology as tools to collect funds. They communicate as we're doing just now, and we are reinforcing networks. So this is very important in, in, in the world we're living today. And I'm really excited to see the new features, um, and I hope you will really like them because we have been working on them. And thanks to your feedback, otherwise it wouldn't be possible. And I think this is, I, and I hope you will you will enjoy the the new tools. Thank you very much. All right, thank you so much, Larissa, for uh, taking us through. 
um, the progress that's been happening, and it looked like uh, there's a lot of good uh, good thing that the team had been doing from the IDS for perspective um, since uh, the inception two years ago. So that's exciting to see. And uh, it's also nice to see the three events that happened during the COVID time. And, uh, you know, some of the panelists here, including myself, were part of that. So it's that's exciting to see them looking forward to, to, to getting the report uh, from all the finding that, that was captured from that. Thank you so much for your presentation. Now uh, we'll move on to uh, Roberto. So Roberto is going to take us through the, the new platform or all the updates and then uh, the fancy. Um, well, Roberto, I won't, take, uh, I won't take it away from you. Go ahead. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Kimo, for, for the great introduction. And, and um, thank you to all, all the participants that have uh, logged on. Um, and thank you to all the, the panelists and, and speakers that have joined us today for, for this uh, great event. Uh, very exciting, as, as the colleagues have said. Um, this is a milestone for the platform. And we've really been um, listening to all the feedback that we've been receiving over the last two years to try to make the platform uh, as responsive to um, your needs as, as we can. So, um, as you can see, uh, I hope uh, everybody can see my screen now. Okay, uh, Larissa's shaking her head, so I'm going to go ahead. Um, this is the new uh, version of the iDiaspora platform. Um, as previously, it's still based around the, the three pillars of learn, uh, connect, learn, and contribute, as is found as the tagline for the iDiaspora logo and the platform in general. And I won't go into depth into each one of these um, because this structure pretty much um, has remained the same since the, the previous version. Um, so I won't, f for time purposes, I'll be focusing on the, the new features, which we, we have been working on for the last, uh, for, for ahead of this launch. Um, so one of the first things which we have often um, received as a comment is the limiting factor of having the platform only in English. Um, of course, um, we want the community that we're working with is very diverse, as, as Larissa pointed out. Um, we have members from over 100 countries around the world. And uh, it, it can be difficult uh, for some to, to navigate in English. So the new version of the platform is multilingual. Um, as as you can see here, we have a, a Spanish version of the platform already live, um, and we will be adding a French version uh, to the platform as well. Um, these are the three official languages of IOM. Um, so these will be the first three languages um, that uh, the platform has been translated into um, to facilitate engagement of different communities um, that but, feel more comfortable in, in different languages. So this is one of the, the let's say, key uh, additions that you'll find in this new version of the platform. Um, so here you can see the Spanish version. Um, it's, it's loading a bit slowly, but, um, but essentially, I mean, it is the same platform, but with uh, the content um, and uh, the navigation primarily available uh, in Spanish for, for those that uh, prefer using the Spanish language and feel more comfortable. Um, so, I'll, since we are uh, having the, the webinar in English, I'll return back to the uh, English version of the platform for the rest of the, the walkthrough of the new features. Um, so, here we go. Another of the feedback that we've often uh, received from our users and partners is that while they appreciate the, the global reach and scope of the diaspora, um, they feel that it would be much easier and, and more convenient to, to navigate the platform if it can be done um, by region. Um, so here we've actually added a new feature um, that allows navigation of all the content on the platform um, by region and by country. 
So here on the home page, you can find it through this map, also through the menu uh, you have here and the drop down menu, the different regions and, and basically content, uh, continent um, where we have divided the, the content of the platform. And we'll use Africa as an, as an example, as it's one of the most um, populated uh, regions. So we had a lot of engagement with the African diaspora. Um, therefore, we have uh, a good bit of content from Africa to, to be displayed. So on this regional uh, page, you can see that this page basically brings together all content that has been tagged uh, with an African country as the country of origin or a country of destination that is relevant to that content. You can also see users that are from that region. Um, and you can see all sorts of content from news and updates, uh, calendar events, blog entries, uh, opportunities. These are uh, concrete um, <clears throat> opportunities for uh, engagement. So short-term assignments, volunteer assignments, um, these are all available uh, through the platform. Resources in terms of um, manuals, training materials, um, but also uh, research and studies. And once you're on the regional page, you can also uh, dig down deeper into the country pages. and. Similar to the regional pages, the country pages collect all the content which have been tagged with um, that country as either the country of origin or the country of destination relevant to that content. Um, so again, here you can see for Sierra Leone, um, the users that are from that country and the content, um, be it um, calendar events or opportunities or resources that are related to that country. So all this content is also available through the traditional uh, global navigation of the platform through the main menu. But this allows users to uh, focus on those countries or regions that are most interest um, to them. So <clears throat> this is, again, uh, another of the big changes that we've done to respond to uh, some of the feedback that, that we've been receiving. Um, another feature that we've added um, relates to how the community engages. And we've been working with um, different aspects of community engagement uh, since the beginning, trying to facilitate um, that kind of connection and, and collaboration. And here you can see the uh, Explore uh, the community page. Uh, this would be familiar for those of you that have, have used the platform before. We also have a new feature um, or uh, enhanced feature for the community dashboard. Um, unfortunately, due to some uh, issues uh, with the server, I can't show you that right now, but we they should be online uh, shortly. But here through the Explore the Community page, and we can basically browse all the different uh, users on the platform um, and filter and search by different um, characteristics. So, for example, um, I'm going to... Uh, I want to find our web developer who is from the Philippines. So I can search here through all the users in iDiaspora to find all the users uh, on the platform who are from the Philippines. You could also search uh, and cross-reference by place of residence, city of residence, um, type of users, because we have individual business organizations and government agencies, as Larissa mentioned. Um, so Paul is actually our web developer who's done a great job in putting all this all together. And I, I wanted to show you his profile because it actually illustrates another one of the features that we've added to this new version, which is to basically uh, recognize those users and uh, those members of the community that are most active um, through providing a system of badges uh, that recognize the amount of contributions that a member has actually made to the community. Um, so here you can see on our web developer poll's um, profile, 
He has a number of badges. Um, these on the top are activity badges, uh, which are received for uh, uploading or generating new content. So depending on the amount of content uh, within different categories. So um, for example, the booster uh, relates to how many other users you've recommended. Um, Thinker uh, relates to the um, number of blog posts that have been made. And conversationalist refer to the number of forum conversations that have been initiated. And based on the number of activity badges, then uh, there's also user badges that will recognize the overall contribution of that user to the platform. And so um, there's different levels of user badges depending on the amount of contribution. Um, and now I will quickly uh, show you my own uh, profile um, for one of the other new features which uh, hopefully will facilitate that uh, engagement even further. Uh, that is a very old picture, so um, don't be surprised. That is me uh, many years ago. Um, and here, what once we uh, log in, so right now everything you've seen is from the perspective of a non-registered uh, visitor to the platform. But once you actually sign into the platform with your username and, and password, uh, then you have the opportunity to interact uh, with other users in a number of ways. Um, so once you identify a user you would like to, to be in touch with, you can send them uh, direct messages. Uh, but one of the new features is actually you can follow another user and receive notifications whenever that user um, per, uh, generates new content on the platform. Um, this is part of a whole new system of notifications that we've built into the, the, the new version of iDiaspora. Um, so I'll show you here, um, basically once you're on your profile, once you've established your profile, you can follow other users, but you can also um, subscribe to receive notifications on different kinds of content that are being uploaded. Uh, so specifically, some of the content uh, that one can subscribe to here under notifications. Uh, you can see events calendars. So whenever there's a new event, you'll be notified. Uh, the news and updates, whenever news and updates are generated, then you'll be notified. Or featured content. And featured content is any kind of content uh, which is promoted to the home page of iDiaspora. So this can be calendar events, it could be used in news and updates, but it could also be resources, it can be opportunities. So it's a number of different kinds of content, but those that are considered to be um, most interesting for the community and that um, thus are uh, promoted to the homepage. Um, those are the main features I wanted to share with you uh, today, um, but I also wanted to make sure to highlight the, the fact that um, only because we did this uh, relatively large upgrade, it doesn't mean that we're planning to stop here. Um, iDiaspora always has been and will continue to be uh, an evolving space, and we very much uh, invite all the users to, to provide us with inputs and suggestions so that we can continue adapting uh, and improving the platform as the uh, as new needs arise, as new inputs are received. Um, so please do not hesitate in, in providing us feedback, comments. Um, we're looking forward to being able to, to make sure that iDiaspora is responsive to the needs of this community, which we are trying to serve. Thank you again, and I'm happy to pass the word back to Kimo. Excellent. Thank you so much, Roberto. And uh, yeah, there's uh, like a lot of exciting new feature added to this. Um, so it will be nice uh, for everybody to now just get opportunity and jumping into it and start getting used to it. Um, thank you so much.
um, again, Roberto, for sharing these new features and uh, Larissa for walking us through um, the process and then the progress that's been made from I diaspora for the past two years. Uh, it seems you can see a lot of things, a lot of new things, a lot of progress, like a really good progress have been um, happening ever since. So, so yeah, thank you so much, guys, for getting us up to date. Now we're going to move to the third part of the session today, which is going to be uh, three panelists that we invited for the, um, from the respective diaspora community to come in and share their perspective and, um, yeah, and, um, um, you know, with their involvement in their community and then also with their involvement with the I diaspora community. So the first person I'm going to call um, to come will be uh, Peter Work. So Peter, actually, I will ask each and every one of you to actually introduce yourself and then probably in one or two minutes so the audience know who you are and then before you start talking about the, um, the topic that you want to talk about. But Peter, Peter will reflect a little bit on the iDiaspora's role in uh, building global community. Peter, if you could go, go on and please introduce yourself and then, uh, yeah, take it away. Thank you, Camel. I am so excited about I does for a new version and thank you so much Roberto for sharing and we love your hat and also um, Larissa for, for bringing us on the, the two years now we are entering the new chapter together so thank you so much brief introduction of myself my name is Peter Kwok I am the chair of Global Diaspora Confederation and in the UK I chair the UK Federation of Chinese Professionals. So what we do, what I do, um, I am a diaspora or community representative in the UK and also in China. I chair a, a number of diaspora organizations um, in Europe, Africa and China. So a lot of experience in trying to juggle the language. And uh, as I actually, talk with Roberto earlier on before we start. Um, my Spanish is not that good, so I'm trying very hard to learn as well. So I am progressing. So this is uh, my very brief uh, summary, but today I'm trying to talk about the, the connection between the new Global Diaspora Confederation I chair with a lot of amazing board members and the, uh, the diaspora connection between each other. So as I said, I, uh, I chair the GDC and less than seven months ago, I had the chance to speak at iDiaspora, first global virtual diaspora, diaspora exchange with the wonderful moderating also from Cam. My topic was on uh, tackling xenophobia and hate as we experienced a, uh, a suspected rise in community tension towards hate crime. At the webinar, I shared about how we introduced the concept of and set up our first national virtual third party reporting center in the UK. For those who are not familiar with uh, third party reporting, when a uh, victim or witness experiences hate crime and prefers to talk to someone who is familiar with their culture and language, they can approach us for help in with police. However, no country is exempt from xenophobia since the beginning of our human race. But the COVID-19 pandemic this year has made this global phenomenon more viral and Chinese diaspora was only one of the first groups being severely affected. Thanks to our I diaspora event, our work and concerns were shared with other diaspora communities. But most importantly, it was the space on the I diaspora platform that gave me the confidence in developing the ideas for more social change. This was how Global Diaspora Confederation, GDC, was born in response to the need for greater coordination and collaboration in face of the global crisis brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic. So a brief history about our newly developed GDC. The reason why we created the GDC in face of the current tsunami of uh, xenophobia, as our UN Secretary General said, is because we believe that unity is the solution. One diaspora organization may do so much for its community, but together we create a global impact that spread positivity across the world. 
Hence, from uh, May to July, we have reached out to 1,200 diaspora organizations and published with over 230 diaspora federations and associations a joint statement of solidarity with victims of COVID-19 related xenophobia. Thanks to Adet, which is also here today with us, Coalition for Venezuela, African Diaspora Network, UK Federation of Chinese Professionals that helped convene the statement. As our IOM Director General Antonio Vitorino said, the joint statement reaffirms the importance of racial and social justice and the need for unity between peoples, regardless of origin, race, skin, color, and cultural background at this challenging time and into the post pandemic recovery. So in July, Global Diaspora Confederation was formally established with an elected board and a strong number of member organizations. By October, we have successfully attracted applications from over 1,500 volunteer professionals through iDiaspora platform, enabling us to uh, embark on creating the foundation of our global secretariat and focus on global COVID-19 online consultation and mapping. So as we are on track to become the largest diaspora-led organization for global diaspora communities, our role is to unite, support, develop, and promote diaspora organizations so they can maximize the impact of supporting their host and home communities in light of the current pandemic and beyond. Going forward, the uh, GDC will further the exchange of best practices and facilitate joint initiatives among diaspora organizations and promote cooperation between humanitarian actors and diaspora organizations through the partnership with UNIOM and iDiaspora. The GDC will also provide uh, our members, member organizations, global diaspora network support updates and events. In terms of the, uh, the localizing our global support, we are aiming to strengthen our dialogue with member organizations and partners to mobilize resources. Let me give you an example. Yesterday, I was with uh, my virtual support center team leaders of an African charity that I chair that supports local vulnerable community. We spent five hours with our country representatives to discuss how we could further support the displaced population hiding in bushes from attacks. They do not have money, no food, no clean water, no transportation, uh, no medical treatment, and even they want to try and transport, the roads do not allow them, or not, the roads are not built. So I know IOM is already doing so well on this. I imagine we have, we also have someone local and registered on iDiaspora who can share his or her experience for us to complete our data mapping for our COVID-19 outreach initiative. How good would it be? So I, I saw, um, because we were talking with Sierra Leone and Cameron teams yesterday. So I was so really pleased that actually Roberto showed the Sierra Leone page on iDiaspora. So, it more or less echo, echo what I actually said just now. So um, to conclude and celebrate the new version of iDiaspora and the success of GDC, may I take this opportunity to thank Marina for all her very kind support. And I know Roberto, you have heard me saying this so many times, but I want to thank you again for everything. And also Martin Russell, if you're here, for introducing me to this wonderful platform.
in such a, a short period of time, the way it was built and put together, the way the initiative started, and then now I feel like the sky is the limit um, in terms of like the accomplishment that can be done. So when people start coming together, magic happen. And this is like a really <laughs> a, a, a clear example of that. So thank you so much for uh, taking us through that and then really clearly articulating what you guys have been doing and what is uh, what is in the you know in the future. Thank you, Kemal. Thank you. All right. Now I will we'll go uh, to the next um, two people that's uh, on the schedule. So we have um, Karina. Do you go first or Laura? I'm not sure who wants to go, wants to go first. I think that I'm supposed to start. All right. So I will have a Laura um, go first. Laura, if you you wouldn't mind introducing yourself, uh, maybe just a two minute, and then you can go on and then. Um, start talking about the topic, but Laura and Karina is going to talk about the perspective on how I diaspora serve the transnational community. Um, Laura, please um, do go ahead and introduce yourself so people who don't know who you are. And then, uh, yeah, take it from there. Are you sure? Or do you want to go Karin first? I think she was first on the list. If you oh, Karin, go first. I don't mind. I'm okay, fine. Laura, go. Yeah, Laura, go, go first, please. Okay, all right, okay, sorry about that. Um, yeah, so um, thank you so much for, for the invitation, first of all. Um, I'm very grateful. I am, I am new here. I am the new kid on the block here, but I'm uh, super excited to, to be sharing uh, what we do um, in, in here in, in the group that I represent. So um, a little bit about myself. I am, my name is Laura de la Fuente, I, am, uh, I was born in Mexico. I've been living in Ireland for the uh, past 24 years. So I will be waving both flags, uh, the Mexican and the Irish one, uh, proudly, both of them. And um, I am a sociologist as, um, from, from school, uh, but I am also a, a project manager in, in um, IT finance. Um, at the moment, I am the president of the uh, Mexican Network of Talented Professionals Abroad. Uh, the name in Spanish is Red Global MX. And um, so the idea is that I talk to you about the, the Red Global. So uh, this association is a, it's a network association um, which was created 15 years ago as a project from the um, the Foreign Affairs Board of Mexico to group the diaspora or the brain, uh, the brain drain in, in Mexico. So, um, as um, 15 years ago, it was it was created mainly focused on the U.S. and, and Canada, which was the majority of the immigrants um, where they go. So, but um, with with the years, it, it developed to what it is now, which is a, a well-structured uh, organization. We have um, presence in um, nearly 80 countries in the world. We have um, around 6,500 members. We are the, um, the only uh, network association, a Mexican one, that is recognized by, by the government. Uh, it's, it's institutionally recognized. We have a collaboration ties with uh, all the embassies where we have a representation. Uh, um, that is mainly about the structure that we have uh, worldwide. And what do we do in the Red Global is a kind of divided or structured in four major pillars. We, we call them pillars. Um, so we have a, a entrepreneurship, we have social responsibility, uh, we have a science and technology, uh, all the STEM area and uh, the um, the arts, the, the creative arts, and um, that is the structure that is followed um, across all the we call them chapters that um, where we have representation in, in the different countries, and we we have a, a rules we have a, we we have the structure uh, all across that is. A, followed um, uh, from all chapters. So um, we also have um, representations in, in the country. Um, we, in, for every state of the country, majority of the, the states and 
in Mexico, there's 32 states. We have so far 16 uh, uh, representations of the Red Global in, in, in the country. And the, the way we work is that based on those pillars uh, of these four different areas, um, the, um, the Mexicans that are registered in their chapter in their country um, and perhaps they specialize in science and technology or, or, uh, or they are musicians or they're in arts, the uh, group with these um, representations in Mexico to reach out more people uh, in Mexico in order to make this um, a economy of knowledge to be more available to the people in our country for all the all the Mexicans uh, that are at the moment unable to travel or to emigrate or they just want to learn. So majority of our activities, um, obviously they are networking, but also they are around all the, uh, the economy of knowledge. We want to give back to, to our country and we, we give back to our communities where we are. So um, that's pretty much in, in a high level, in a, in a nutshell, how we are organized worldwide. We, we group as well by region. We, we are 22 chapters in, in the European region. We, we meet every year and we have different uh, clusters of uh, specialties. We have a lot of uh, SMEs. Uh, subject matter experts in different areas. So based on the uh, initiative or, or the, 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 the expertise, the group, and we have the initiatives such as um, a Global Women, MX. We have a, a cluster of um, science and technology, which is very strong in Europe. We have the, uh, this, the cluster of uh, a case studies in, in the U.S. and Canada because there's a, there's a number of Mexicans, nearly 10, that they work in NASA. And um, so we have also a creative industries cluster as well in Europe. So this is just to give you a flavor of um, how, we are, how we are grouped within our chapters, within our region, and uh, that is the same structure we follow to give something back to our communities in Mexico. And people in the different chapters can have very various initiatives. And I'm just going to mention one just to give you another flavor of what we do. Uh, the chapter in, um, in Spain, and they have two, one in Barcelona, one in Madrid, they created a project called a Adopt a High School. So what they, what they started three years ago is working with high schools in disadvantaged areas in, uh, in Mexico, in different parts of of Mexico, and uh, we, we are a number of volunteers part of this group, and what we do as SMEs is share one hour, one hour of, our, of our time uh, whenever is a space available to give a, this uh, sort of a workshop or class to the high school uh, students for free, and, uh, and we think it's amazing because uh, besides their normal curriculum, they can learn about our areas of expertise, so I have spoken about project management, but people that they are in science and technology, um, uh, for example, in, in Madrid, they are experts in, um, you know, in, the, in the study of the field of uh, alcoholism in, in the brain. They are working in labs, they are PhDs, and they, they give these talks to, to these high schools. And I think in, in, in return, in, in a few years' time, this will be amazing to open up this, uh, this young community the eyes to, to what it's like to be a Mexican abroad, what are the, uh, the opportunities they could have. So all, all, everything that we do, it's around the, the, the knowledge that we can share as Mexicans to our communities in the countries where we live uh, or, in the, or in our own country of origin. And a, I, I can take more time and I don't, you know, that, that's not probably <laughs> the, the, um, the moment now. Uh, to, to hijack all the time that, that I have, but I could speak about many other initiatives. But for now, this is kind of just a flavor of what we do. And the reason I am super excited um, about the um, I diaspora um, is because we share the same values, uh, the, the connect, the learn, and the contribute. Uh, those are values that we share strongly, personally, and um, as, as um, 
my my chapter, uh, the the chapter Ireland, and uh, for for from from my team, from my committee, I can I can tell you that um, they they were very uh, impressed when we had a look at the platform and see all the opportunities uh, that could arise from there in terms of networking, in terms of collaborating, in terms of uh, you know synergies with. Uh, not only the Mexican diaspora, but all the diasporas in the, in, in, in the world. And uh, the opportunities just multiply and expand um, by uh, working with you guys. So um, just for example, the COVID-19 as well, we share the same, the same uh, um, you know, uh, desire initiative. And we, we did something like that as well in the Red Global. But I think working with uh, the IOM and the diaspora I think the opportunities will expand and it will make this uh, initiative uh, more, more uh, stronger. So with that, I am going to stop and I am I welcome uh, questions uh, later. So that, that's me. Thank you, Kemo. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Martin Russell, for connecting me with, uh, with all of you guys in the first place, Roberto, Larissa, Peter, everyone here that uh, I have interacted with so far. I know I've been here for, for a very short time, but I'm looking forward to the interactions in the future. Thank you so much, um, you so much uh, Laura, for uh, taking uh, us through and uh, uh, like, uh, the, the uh, amazing work you guys done at the uh, Red Global and Max. It uh, seemed like a really well structured organization, and uh, that's really nice. And I think one of the beauty what this platform is seeing how all the diaspora organization, how organized they are, or what are they doing well, and then like how can other organization learn from that? And I think um, I'm sure you probably have a um, contact from more organization to reach out and and see how if so if there's any good practices to be shared. Thank you so much for uh, um, sharing that for, with us. And now the next person I'll go to will be Karin. Um, so, Karin, if you can, you know, please introduce yourself also for the, uh, the audience members that don't know you, and then, uh, yeah, just to take it from there. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Kimo. And, uh, of course, thank you to IOM for the invitation. Uh, I must say that I'm really glad and, and very honored uh, to be here to uh, participate in this anniversary event, knowing that two years ago, ADEPT, attended the launch of IA Diaspora. So it's a, it's a real pleasure to see uh, the platform, the initiative evolve. Um, so um, I, am, I am the executive director of ADEPT, which is the Africa Europe Diaspora Development Platform. And uh, I have been asked to talk about, of course, IA Diaspora, but also by, uh, about the um, activities and the services that are offered by uh, by ADEPT when it comes to diaspora engagement. So um, I will say a, a few words about um, the, the platform. So we are a platform of uh, African diaspora organizations based in Europe, so the um, European Union, but also Norway, um, the UK and Switzerland. And uh, our members conduct development activities in Africa, but also um, diversity and uh, in, uh, inclusions action in Europe. And the, the mission of the platform is to enhance um, the capacities, but also the impact of um, the diaspora organizations in Africa. And, um, and this is very ambitious, but also very necessary to help reshape um, the narrative about diaspora. So um, to do so, we intervene in three, in three sorry, different areas. The first one being uh, communication and information. So we provide information about events, about funding, about trainings, and about fellowships. And we do so through um, our newsletter, our website, and also through um, social and professional um, media. We also um, showcase actions that are conducted by the um, diaspora. And here again, the idea is to help um, change the, the narrative um, about uh, the diaspora, to change the way the diaspora is seen. And we do that through our magazine. So we have a magazine called Mag, 
Uh, we also do that through um, our um, several media campaigns. And very recently, we have launched uh, a media campaign on COVID-19 um, and more specifically on the, the actions conducted by um, diaspora organizations and individuals in response to, to COVID-19. We also um, uh, circulate good practices so that other organizations or individuals can take inspiration. More more specifically about our members, um, we conduct as often as possible surveys um, so, that, so that we can have more clarity about their needs and their expectations when it comes to ADEPT. We have um, several ideas on the table, ideas on the table in order to, uh, to improve the, um, the engagement of our members. One of them is to establish a, a community of practice. Another one is to conduct as often as possible um, online consultations um, to have a, a, better, a better idea of where they stand, what they want, what they would like us to do, what they would like to do. Uh, we also would like to, to relaunch uh, what was set up uh, previously, um, which are uh, thematic working groups. So all that is about communication and information. The second area of intervention is policy and advocacy on uh, migration and development related issue. And here the objective is to try um, as much as possible to, um, to promote the inclusion of um, diaspora organi organizations in development circles and also to, uh, to amplify the voice of, of the diaspora. And to do so, um, we have a, a flagship event, uh, which is called uh, Diaspora Development Dialogue, uh, which is a space for dialogue, gathering um, international organizations, uh, of course, diaspora organizations, but also bilateral agencies, the private sectors, the NGOs to discuss um, diaspora related issues. And uh, we use this plan to this well framework, let's say, to also organize uh, trainings, to organize networking events, but also peer learning. Uh, when, it comes to, when it comes to policy and advocacy, we also produce um, position papers. And very recently we have issued uh, um, Position, position paper on the EU anti-racism action plan. Uh, we also, of course, participate in high-level forums. Um, very recently, we participated in the International Dialogue on Migration organized by IOM. Uh, we also uh, participate in the GFMD among many other forum. Um, we also uh, consult our members uh, as often as possible. I think it's never too much, but um, we try not to, to bother them too much, knowing that they are also very busy. But we, we consult them to um, help us um, build a, a common position um, um, when it comes to um, issues that are uh, handled by the EU. And very recently, the European Commission launched a consultation regarding the integration of migrants. So we consulted with our members uh, with a view to uh, having a common response to this consultation. So this was for policy and advocacy and communication and information. And the third and last um, area of intervention is capacity development. So we provide uh, technical and, and um, financial support to, um, to diaspora organizations that want to implement projects uh, in Africa and in Europe. We also organize trainings, as, as already mentioned. And we provide support to help create consortiums, because we think that it's very important when it comes to diaspora engagement. Um, last but not least, we have also created a, a, a pool of um, diaspora experts that can 
help us, for example, when we want to organize a, a, a training and uh, other activities. So this was to, to, to give you um, uh, an idea, so very briefly about what we do. Uh, when it comes to I diaspora, uh, this year we signed a memorandum of under understanding with I diaspora, and we are very happy about that. Uh, we have seen this collaboration gaining strength. We participated in the initiative that was uh, launched um, um, as a response to the mounting xenophobia due to COVID-19. And I think that this is a, a, a real illustration of the, the added value and, and the strength of our diaspora, this ability to create a, a, a global community. Um, for us, it's very important uh, to know much more about what um, diaspora organizations based in other geographic areas do, because it's important for us to know them and, and to learn from them. And that's the reason why we are very happy that uh, uh, the, the, the website is being revamped. Um, apart from this initiative, so we have also used iDiaspora to promote our events. We have launched um, um, a webinar series on the EU-Africa partnership, and there was, for example, a webinar on migration. And to us, it was very useful to have it promoted through um, iDiaspora. And uh, as I said before, we have launched a, a media campaign on the COVID-19, and it was also, also promoted via IOM website and it was really a satisfaction for us. Um, personally, I use iDiaspora um, to get knowledge because there is this wealth of knowledge, you know, when it comes to knowledge resources and it, it's extremely useful. Um, what I would like to see more, uh, but I, I say I, but I think that uh, I can talk on, on behalf of ADEPT, uh, is to see more um, cross-regional actions, uh, joint statements, but also um, joint projects on specific thematic um, topic, for example, human rights, uh, uh, climate change, uh, and I think that it can be very impactful. Um, but there is so many things to, to say. Um, I think it can also be very useful um, to talk about funding because you know that it's a key issue for a diaspora organization. It's not always good to talk about money, but, but it's key. Uh, and I don't know if it's a possibility, but it's a possibility. But uh, I think that if it is, you you shouldn't refrain from from that because it's always a, um, a key question for uh, for us. So uh, this is what I wanted to say, and and uh, and of course uh, a big thank you for the very fruitful collaboration between Adept and Idaspora and Adept and IOM um, at large. Thank you so much, for team, for, <laughs> Thank you so much uh, for for uh, walking us through the uh, all the work that Adept has been doing and then continue to do, and then the vision, the dream, and then uh, how you bring in the community, especially the African diaspora community in the in Europe. And uh, yeah, I like. Uh, how you have this a bigger vision and, and I think one of the areas especially for most of the diaspora below, uh, for the African diaspora is, you know um, that narrative change and I think that's a bigger thing so I'm glad to see uh, you guys have that on the agenda so um, thank you so much for for that I think we're gonna now move on to um, take a few questions but let me check with my uh, co-host here. Roberto, do we have it into like 4.20? Uh, what time is the... Uh, yeah, we have uh, to, to 4.30. Was, was into 4.30. So we have... All right, cool. Minutes. So we still... Okay, so we still have a few... Um, we have opportunity here to take a few questions from the audience. I think there's already one question that's specifically addressed to you. Um, Roberto, I'll have you take on that because I think it's going to be helpful to, to other people also in the audience. And then um, we'll see if there's more question. If not, then I have a question for myself for the uh, for the panelists. Great, thank you, Kimo. 
Um, so I'm actually going to take advantage of this question to, to show a bit more about the, the platform. Um, so the, the question from Cedric was, can uh, previous initiatives be shared through the platform or is it just for future initiatives? Um, and the answer is that there definitely um, there's a space to share previous initiatives on the platform. Um, and there's a number of ways that that could be done. So one of the, the places where uh, we have a lot of interesting initiatives that have taken place in the past is here under the Connect pillar in Get Inspired. Um, and, and basically this page includes a number of success stories, uh, interviews with uh, diaspora leaders and experts. So if you have these kinds of promotional materials for your initiative, um, videos mainly um, or the, what we call success stories. It's, it's a kind of online storytelling um, system, which I'm not an expert to tell you the exact details, but um, these can be shared here. Um, in addition, um, if you want to, to share uh, information in a text format about your initiatives, you can create a blog post. Um, so the blogs are open to all users. Um, so you can very easily create a blog post both about upcoming events um, and about previous campaigns. Um, you can see here a post from, from Peter and his, the Combating Prejudice campaign they did, um, as well as, as some of the posts that, that I've shared. Um, so these are the two main areas, but actually one of the new features um, in the platform is also in the, uh, the events calendar. Um, unlike the previous platform, we actually do have a section for previous um, events. So you can actually uh, go here to the past events and you can uh, have a look at some of the different uh, events which have been um, promoted through iDiaspora previously. Um, so if you have created an event uh, previously on iDiaspora, you can actually go back to those events and add uh, videos, photo galleries, um, reports uh, to follow up on, on those events. So um, I hope that that answers your question. Um, and I just wanted to take uh, one more minute um, to actually address the point which Corinne made, um, because this was actually feedback that we have received from, from other partners and members about the funding issue. So we've actually created a space for um, sharing funding opportunities. I didn't mention it previously because right now we haven't populated it, um, but basically this is just to let you know that it is one of the, the new features on the, the platform uh, that we're working on and that will uh, be ready hopefully soon to actually help to uh, diaspora associations be able to connect with the funding that they need to implement the important work that they're doing. Thank you for that um, and happy to receive any other questions. Um, thank you so much, Roberto, for going through that. That was uh, um, it's much easier to actually show people how to navigate directly versus like just explaining. So thank you uh, for doing that. Two for one, you actually answered both questions. Um, I think I really I, I think maybe most of the participants or all the participants agree with me. Just hearing these three panelists and go through the work that they done, you like just can help but be inspired by uh, the amount of the, the the effort for each organization but really the vision that the each of them has to like really put the diaspora community on the map to support them to promote them to, to really um enhance their ability to 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 make an impact not only in the country of origin but here that's the idea of being part of the diaspora i think my question to you all feel free to jump jump in how do you see now we having a conversation which is the first step right i always say once you see each other then you start talking then once you start talking then you start engaging and then things start coming happening from there we have done the first step how do you see this organization figuring out in a concrete way coming together and really starting sharing this this because we are on the same path how do you start plugging in so i like to use that term now versus saying collaborating, right? How do you start finding the synergy area to really start practically 
making things happen, start working together and start really plugging in and as it go forward. Just unmute yourself and feel free. It looked like a lawyer I want to jump on first. <laughs> yes, I, I just kind of um, wanted to share um, that um, from, from, my, from my perspective as representing the Red Global, I think a good way to start would be via the SMEs, the subject matter experts. Um, so, for example, in, in my committee, we have four for these four chap these four pillars of work and we capture pretty much every everything under those pillars and I have people and experts um, in those pillars. So we know there's initiatives and personal projects that um, they are just we are working on them at the at the Ireland level, with Mexico level, at the region level. But now that we have um, a diaspora and we have the IOM here and um, I think it will be a great opportunity for these people from, from, from my chapter to join to join the diaspora to start the conversation on, on their topics they are experts or they have interested on and and probably we share the structure that we follow if that's of any help be open-minded and start working with like-minded individuals in, in other diasporas or in other members of the of the diaspora. That's that's the way I've seen it um, work at in, in, in our site, for example. That's the way that's the way we created the I didn't say the name in English because um, I don't know the translation, but the ones that speak Spanish may understand it. When we when we created the Red Global, when the Red Global was created 15 years ago, we, we only created the chapters, which are the representation on the countries, but eventually seeing the need to collect and make synergies where the need was, we created the representation on the states in Mexico, they call nodos. Nodos is a, a, a word that significant, the meaning is um, there's a place that it is stable, it doesn't move. So the nodo is the the, the places in Mexico of all the people that they cannot move, they stay there in Mexico, but still they want to make a synergy, interact, resolve a need, uh, raise a problem, just get together to, to, to join talent and create groups, create companies, whatever you, you can name, you name it, we, we have seen it. So I think it, it, it will start with the appetite of every person, at least from the SME perspective, which is what I can offer. Um, from, from the Red Global perspective. Hope it makes sense. <laughs> thank, thank you so much. Maybe one person can go and then I think we have, a, we have a couple of questions here from our dear friend and advocate, um, Martin. So our, yeah, maybe Karin or Peter can take a stab at the same question or we can move on to like a big, um, get to, yeah, to the next question. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Kimo, and thank you to Martin for this very, very important point. And I think that it's key, even though it's a little bit more complicated uh, in this uh, COVID-19 uh, time, it's very important to convene uh, as often as possible. And I think it makes a, a difference uh, because it helps, um, as I said, um, know each other, and but also uh, it helps create partnership. It's always the first step um, to the creation of a partnership. So it's if it cannot be made in person, we have to find a way to 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 meet to meet each other um, as often as possible online, and that's and that's the reason why. Uh, we aim to uh, put in place uh, regular online consultations internally. But uh, I do believe in cross-fertilization. So I think it, that it's also important to have the possibility to, to, to meet and discuss and exchange views with people from other geographic areas. Thank, thank <laughs> you. I think that's a, that's a good point. Yeah. If I may Hello, uh, Peter. Yes, Peter. Oh, please, uh, <laughs> yes, Kim. Actually, I, I heard this 
cross fertilization is a wonderful term to actually describe. And thank you for the wonderful questions, Martin. I think um, cross promoting is actually a great idea on social media specifically. And nowadays, we all use so different type of social media. And interesting enough, GDC has created a video uh, recently, um, very short, I mean, one minute. But I think it's promoted on uh, iDiaspora which I thought if the audience would like to see it on YouTube, see it on iDiaspora, then it will actually spread the news of uh, the new functionality of uh, iDiaspora. That, that's a very good idea. And I'm going to send you the, everyone the link now to iDiaspora to view our video, video later. Not now, later. Thank you. So I think, Peter, you were answering Martin's question on maybe I will, re I will read, the, read the question here for everybody to, 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 um, to hear, maybe um, give an opportunity yeah. to also Roberto to take a shot at it. The question was the advocate, the fans, um, the participant here, how do we, considering the new, um, the 2.0, is this a 2.0 or like the, this is really new version with like all this new amazing feature on it? How can the participant, the advocate, everybody like put the help spread the word out. Um, yeah, I think, uh, sorry, uh, Roberto, do you want me to go ahead? To that? So, yeah. Oh, in terms of, uh, yeah, again, I think I want to reiterate the social media is such a powerful tool. Um, I think it is not like kind of a uh, hard selling, like promoting is like heavily, but it's about introducing. Because I also realized recently that UKFCP, we uh, need to do more on uh, reaching out to the networks, to the communities, and everyone, um, whether depending on what you represent today, you may be diaspora organizations, you may be a, a individual network. But when you reach out to actually, ah, you saw something very interesting. You actually, you can um, get trophies. Is it trophies or medals? I can't remember. Um, on uh, iDiaspora, uh, because you, uh, you share more information. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so if you share something very interesting like that on your social media, this can increase the awareness substantially um, to come to iDiaspora and to know more about the good work of other diaspora organizations as well. So I think this is some something I would add to that. But I don't back to you. No, thank you thank so you. much, Peter, <laughs> and and thank you, Martin, for the question. I, th I think it's it's actually very much to to the point, um, because we are counting on all our partners and, and advocates um, that are online today um, to to help spread the word about the the platform. And I think the best way, um, from my opinion, is is to use it um, to to take full advantage of it, um, as Kareen mentioned. Um, Adept has been promoting their events through through the event calendar. So when that event is on the calendar, and then you know you share the link through social media, that brings um, new users to the platform. Um, as as Peter mentioned, the uh, the promotional video for the Global uh, Diaspora Confederation is is on the platform. Um, and then when they share that through social media, again that brings people to the platform. And allows people to to get to know, get uh, to be familiar with the platform, um, and and hopefully drive um, more engagement from from a broader base of, of people. Um, and then uh, one thing that that as IOM we we are very much um, happy to offer um, to to all our partners and, and advocates is actually to um, do walkthroughs and, and sort of tutorials with your members, um, be it member associations, like, like in the case of the Confederation or uh, ADEPT, um, or specific um, you know, associations with the diaspora members that, that participate in your association. Um, so we are actually working on um, having a user guide and online tutorials um, now that we have the new platform. Um, so that will probably be released next year. Um, but in the meantime, we've been doing these one-on-one, -on -one, and we are happy to to continue doing those. So please feel free to reach out if you want a uh, um, uh, walkthrough for for your members to to be familiar with how to use the platform, to demystify the platform, um, and make sure that it's it's easy to share content and, and engage. Um, and if I could respond to. Um, 
Martin's other point about the the global I diaspora summit. Um, it is definitely uh, an excellent idea, um, and uh, I I think it is something that we have discussed internally. Um, so it is definitely an option. Um, but definitely, we also want to encourage everyone um, to to actually leverage the global diaspora confederation um, as a means of of collaborating uh, on that global level that is actually diaspora led. Um, so I diaspora, we want to make it a tool for this community, um, but we see the importance of actually diaspora associations leading this initiative. And that's why we, we are very happy to, to count with the partnership and support and collaboration with the global diaspora confederation, um, which actually counts with uh, ADEPT as a board member as well. Um, so well represented here today. Um, so we would definitely look forward to, to maybe doing something jointly with the Confederation, um, but also encourage all uh, interested in this global level collaboration to, to join um, the Confederation, um, which is moving along quite, quite well with the leadership of, of Peter and all his hard work. Um, so I'm sure there'll be a, a general assembly soon. Um, where it'd be another opportunity to, to meet at the global level. Um, so that's from my perspective, but I would also um, welcome Larissa to, to share her thoughts um, in terms of Martin's questions. Thank you everyone for their participation and for the, for the very interesting questions. I would really love to, to organize an EDS for a summit and gather and really start, uh, well, if if COVID allows, or even even in these times, I guess we're doing this type of events, and what doesn't exclude the other. And just to address one point that I really liked was the um, the contribution that Karine made at the end of her presentation about fu the future of not only diaspora but on in general terms on on migration, diaspora development how to address it, this cross-fertilization, but also the cross-regional actions that we can implement and try to, to really learn from each other in terms of themes as human rights or climate change. So I'm really looking forward organizing something around those lines and of course, including all the, the members that we have already been in touch with, uh, as Roberto mentioned, the that really leverage on those networks that already exist. So um, I'm really happy for, for that suggestion. I think it's it's great. And thanks for the, um, thank you for the, the cross search new tools in the diaspora. I think it will be easier to just find and keep tapping on, on the, those resources. Definitely looking forward to it. Thank you. Okay, um, I think uh, that will do it. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Yes, um, I really appreciate it, and I hope uh, um, the participants really um, are leaving this session today with like a lot of new information, a lot of good insight, not only from our panelists on the way their different organizations been run, and also the vision they have for their diaspora, but most importantly. Um, just like putting on the table, like the willingness and the, the desire and the opportunity really to have all these organizations really start figuring out how to merge, how to like cross pollinate, how to work together because everybody's on the same path, right? We all on the same path. And the sooner we figure out how to work together, the sky's the limit. And so you also have like the, the, G, the GDC that's here and then you have the new version of the I diaspora as a tool. So it seems like uh, everything is in place of the, all the pieces of the puzzle are in place. It's just a matter of like uh, plugging them together. So um, I'm hoping 2021 will be really um, an, an amazing step progress that's done um, in terms of like uh, bringing all these things together and in terms of like uh, really creating the bigger impact that the diaspora is capable of doing. And then all of us here on this panel and also in the and the audience know the you know the potential the, that the diaspora has. We just need to figure out how do you unlock those potential, and that's what we are trying to do. And so I'm glad that this is an opportunity to bring all of us together in this space to have a conversation. Once you start talking, you start engaging with your, each other, 
and then you start collaborating, start building trust, and the magic start happening. And uh, so I think this is the start. And uh, yeah, thank you so much, everybody, for being here. Roberto, I don't know if you want to have the last word before we let people go. It's uh, 4.30. Pass. Yeah, I would pass the word to Larissa. Okay, Larissa. Mm -hmm. Uh, just once again to thank everybody. I think their input that you made today was great, the participation. And also I want to thank the, the participants who brought up very interesting questions. And hopefully we will be able to meet soon and to keep co-creating because this is the space of co-creation. Um, very nice initiatives um, to reinforce and empower diaspora engagement around the, the, the world. So thank you everyone for being here. All right. Thank, Thank you, everyone. And Thank bye -bye. you very much. Enjoy the rest of the day. The rest of your day. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Take care. Thank you, everyone. Guys, do we stay here for a minute or do are we finishing now? Uh, might be nice to, to wrap up. I mean, I see there's still some attendees. Okay. So let me okay. uh, just I wasn't sure if I, okay. the recording first.